Hello my royal lovelies, welcome back to the channel and of course welcome to my home. Today I am going to have to talk about lots of royal stories that have been hitting the internet recently and are on most people's lips, uh, shall we say. Well, they've been tickling a few lips anyway. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to tr try and amalgamate all of these Harry and Meghan Markle's story into one video. So let's just get straight into it. So Harry and Meghan attended a Katy Perry concert. Now, why would this make any sort of headline, you might ask? And I think you, that that's a very pertinent point to make. Why is somebody attending a concert making headlines online on people's lips? It's a pretty bizarre world when it gets to this. Uh, when I attended the Madonna concert, there wasn't a whisper in any press. Where's the press? I mean, honestly. Anyway, Harry and Meghan attend a Katy Perry, her final concert in Las Vegas, I do believe, and it makes headlines. So let's just get kind of stuck into this story. I'm going to read some story and then, as with all of these topics, I'm going to read a bit and then talk a bit about it and give my assessment of it. So Prince Harry and Meghan are branded eco-hypocrites after flying into Katy Perry's gig on the private plane of a Texan oil hair, air, hair. It's spelled hair with a H-E, but it's pronounced air. Anyway, um, so just the headline in itself um, tells me a big tale. Branded eco-hypocrites, private jet, Texan oil air. It all... It's very indulgent, isn't it? Uh, especially when Harry is supposed to be linked with Travelist, um, you know, aimed at cutting uh, fuel emissions, everyone's personal carbon footprint. And there he is taking private jet here, there, everywhere, it seems. Also, uh, as the extension, it believes... Uh, of a Texan oil air. So Harry and Meghan probably, I mean, who knows? I'm, I'm speculating, but they probably, it was an invitation. They probably didn't pay any money for it. So freebies, freebies uh, for Meghan, freebie, freebies. Um, and I'm sure they enjoyed every minute of it. I mean, who wouldn't? Private plane, private jet, free. Anyway, um, Yes, branded complete hypocrites, it really is. Um, so, as we know, they joined the likes of Cameron Diaz and husband Benji Madden, as well as actress Zoe Saldana on the Gulfstream jet on a 40-minute private flight to watch the final show of Perry's Vegas residency. <gasps> how glitz, how glam, how gorgeous. <gasps> I'm so jealous, I wish I was there. Just hours later, the Duke's brother, uh, Prince William, of course, the Prince of Wales, I wish they'd get the titles correct, uh, flew on a commercial British Airways flight to Singapore uh, for the Earthshot Prize Awards. Now, of course, you know, <laughs> we're comparing private jets versus commercial. Now, of course, William and Catherine and all members of the royal family have flown private jet previously. And they will still continue to do so within certain circumstances. But there has been a major shift within the way that the royals travel over the years. Over the past probably five years, there's been a major shift. Uh, they are very aware of being as eco-friendly as possible and how the optics look when it comes to travel. So there has been a big uptake on commercial flight usage within the working royals. Where it's not possible or it's been deemed a safety risk, they have flown private. So I imagine that kind of balance will continue. As it seems, Harry and Meghan could have chosen to have gone commercial for a 40 minute flight. Uh, to Las Vegas. So it does seem a little bit exuberant uh, to have, well, it's because it was free, you know, free. We're going to Vegas on a private plane. <gasps> yes, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you, my love? Anyway, 
Um, the, by the way, the concert looks amazing. I do love Katy Perry, so you know, I would. <laughs> I would have gone myself. Uh, one royal expert, well, I question the expert part, uh, has suggested that Harry, who is still patron of the charity, should get the sack for the decisions to fly privately. Well, I don't think it's necessarily a charity. I mean, it's, it's more of a business. It's kind of a business model, I suppose. And the one thing I will say, hands up, we don't know whether Harry paid to have the flight offset. He did pay to have the flight or rather Elton John paid to have the flight offset when he snubbed Her Majesty, Her Late Majesty the Queen, uh, going to see Elton John on his private jet rather than going to Balmoral. Let's not forget that. Um, Angela Levin, big Harry and Meghan fan I'm told, um, has told The Sun they think they have gotten so grand they wouldn't dream of taking a normal flight with everybody else. My goodness. Um, they've got all these rich friends to pay for it. It's worse than do as I say, not as I do, because he's the patron of a charity or business, if you like. Um, William was welcomed hugely in Singapore, which must have annoyed Harry and Meghan. The sort of behaviour is exactly why we call them eco-hypocrites. Well, Angela, Angela's got a lot to say, hasn't she? Um, but yes, <laughs> this particular aircraft releases about 1.8 tonnes of CO2 every hour, nearly a quarter of the 7.4 tonnes the average Britain produces every year. Um, when contacted by The Sun about Harry and Meghan's flight, uh, Heard said they just went to dinner and to see Katie's last show. They're nice people. Uh, adding that he had no comment to make on criticism of the Sussex's private flight, as I'm not them. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to read any more. By the way, the concert does look amazing. Um, and there's no reason why Harry and Mag Meghan should not go to see a concert. By the way, the photographs that came back, Harry looks bored as in. I think he'd rather be anywhere. I think he did this for Meghan. I don't really think he's a big Katy Perry fan. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. He could have all of her playlists. He could be jamming away to Dark Horse and, and Firework and all the rest of the hits. Um, he could be there with cans of squirty cream as, bra, as brassiers and popping them off just like Katy Perry um, in, the <laughs> in her video. Um, but I don't think so. Judging by the photos that came back, he looks miserable as sin and would rather be anywhere else. Although, you know, he did get a free 40-minute private flight from it. Megan looks exuberant, looks very happy. I'm here, I've flown private jet, I'm seeing Katy Perry, I'm with my celebrity friends. <gasps> yes. Um, <laughs> whilst William is flying commercial to Singapore. Um... Anyway, I'm going to move on. The hypocrisy is beginning to rise and I'm feeling a little swamped at the feet. Anyway, now I am not one that is ever going to come down on any kind of charity or organisation that is doing good work. And the Stand Up For Heroes has traditionally been something that has raised awareness and funds for incredible good military causes. So for that, I am never going to come down on it whatsoever. However, um, Harry's involvement in it obviously then falls into uh, royal news and it has drawn a lot of criticism, mainly for the delivery. So I watched this video uh, just before making this and it's a video of two halves. The, the latter, the last half of it, I kind of like, I get. The first half of it, the comedy, what was supposed to be comedy, is just absolutely cringeworthy, appalling. It's revolting. It really is. Made me cringe. If I had a shell, I would have gone up into it and hid and just peeked out and gone, ooh, what's he saying now? Um, it was awful. Harry doing comedy just does not work. He was trying to poke fun at himself and what people have been saying about him. 
it just came off as so contrived. And who was that person handing him the speech? It sounded like Megan. I mean, my goodness. Um, it was just absolutely horrific. Anyway, um, he wore four medals. Now, there has been a coronation medal featuring, uh, obviously, King Charles III, his father, and his stepmother, Queen Camilla. And they're kind of like side profile. I'll try and pop a picture on the screen. Um, it's expected that Harry would have been presented with a coronation medal. William uh, and any other member of the family, you know, would have more than likely have received a coronation medal. I'm sure we'll see them uh, in the future, the next time um, it's appropriate to wear military medals, probably at Remembrance Sunday, just coming up. Um, so I imagine we'll see those. I think Harry, no, it's not confirmed. I will, you know, hands up because not confirmed he was sent one, but it's more than likely that he was uh, being a family member who has served in the military. He was not wearing that, that medal in the video. Now, we don't know how far in advance it was prepared, but I would imagine it would have been filmed after the coronation uh, that obviously happened a lot earlier this year. So we can assume that there's either one of two things. Either he was not given or presented with the coronation medal, which probably could be construed as a family snub, or he was presented with a medal and chose not to wear it, um, possibly because of the ongoing rift between his family and the relationship breakdown uh, between, in particular, father, son, brother, son. Now, why snub that particular medal? Well, you know, when he attended the coronation um, in person, well, obviously it's more than likely because it's got Camilla's face on it. Now, uh, we know how he lambasted her and painted her as this kind of evil, wicked stepmother. And so why would he then want to wear a medal with her face on it? I'm, I'm pretty certain and convinced that that is the answer when it comes to that. So let me just read on. Um, in his virtual speech, Harry poked fun at himself during the clip. Um, and joked about people with ginger hair like himself being an endangered species. Other gags included someone off camera, I think it might be Megan, it sounded like Megan, handing him a speech to keep him on script and a quip about his new life with his family in California not being scrutinised. Well, obviously, Harry is incredibly bothered by the scrutiny. We'll get to that in a moment later because uh, I will be talking about the whole um, King Charles birthday party snub not snub we'll get to that in a moment uh the video was released online just before his father king charles iii was due to set off to give his first king speech now i don't think that is anything to do with harry because obviously he is not the one that controls when you know this video is played at any ceremony so i just think that is you know rather bad timing. But anyway, Harry is allowed to do things at the same time as other members of the family. So I don't think that's a big, a big thing. It wasn't necessarily, we, we, we can't say with certainty it was his choice to have it done on that day and that time. Um, his appearance on the show was done virtually, despite flying on private jet to the Katy Perry concert. So Obviously, again, comparing, he'll fly to be with glitzy, glamorous friends for Katy Perry, but not for the stand-up for heroes. Make of that what you will. At the start of the monologue, he said, Hello, New York. Obviously, I was deeply honoured when Bob asked me to debut my stand-up act with you all tonight. This was a reference to journalist Bob Woodruff and the Bob Woodruff Foundation, who hosted the event uh, in the with the New York Comedy Festival. The Duke said, due to the shockingly low representation of gingers last year, and out of respect for my fellow endangered species, here I am reporting for duty. And he joked to someone who never gets scrutinized, I haven't even had to prepare much. 
but out of an abundance of caution, I have been working on this particular act for quite some time and everyone I know tells me it's perfect. And no, these aren't people who just tell me what I want to hear. These are people like my finance manager, my lawyer, and of course my Reiki healer. Now, it would be funny if it wasn't so true. <laughs> this is what I mean. Uh, it was so cringy because, you know, he has got... He's got all of these things and they probably do completely blow smoke up his backside telling him exactly what he wants to hear. But here he is joking about it, kind of convinced that they don't do that, which is why he's making fun of it in the first place. It's just, it beggars belief. It really, really does. Um, it's kind of a little bit crazy. Um, anyway... Uh, according to Hello, a cough was heard coming off camera and then he was handed the script. I think that was Megan. He said, so we're not doing the thing before reading the script. Thank you uh, for having me to this splendid celebration. Um, and then he got on to the more serious message, which I do value and I do appreciate. Um, but then there was also a few words and comments that could be construed as quips at the royal family, notably that about um, service. So I watched the recording of that that was put out. I watched a version on YouTube that obviously was not filmed from inside the stadium. So I watched it without any, you know, anyone laughing or whatever, or cheering or any kind of sort of background noise, if you like. Uh, I just watched it raw. And the way it came across, it just, it did not... It wasn't funny um, watching it. You knew what he was trying to do. It just looked very clumsy. It looked very contrived. It looked very self-conscious. Um, it just did, it fell a lot short of the mark that I think he was aiming for. It looked like he was a fish out of water. It looked like he was floundering in a land that he was, that he's trying like a new goldfish bowl that he's trying to trying to bring himself up to. And it's just fa falling and failing completely flat. Um, like I say, supposed to be funny. I just, I don't like Harry doing comedy. I didn't like the James Corden sketch that he did a few years ago. Um, and this just fell completely flat for me. Okay, so the big picture, so all of that was kind of faffery going on in the background, but the big story that's been coming out is, of course, King Charles's 75th birthday party, uh, believed to be going ahead, I think, at Clarence House on Tuesday, November the 14th. So invitations most definitely would have gone out already. There was a story uh, that came out um, I think it was in the Sun newspaper um, about Harry not being invited. And of course, this was round about the time when uh, King Charles and Queen Camilla were, were on the royal visit Kenya. So I'm going to read a bit and we'll stop and talk about it and dissect it. Um, so Prince Harry and Meghan have had no contact from Buckingham Palace about an invitation to King Charles's 75th birthday party next week. Their spokesperson told the Mail Online today. So, first of all, do we have a thawing of relations between Harry's camp and the British tabloid and online press? Because we had that dramatic... Uh, announcement, didn't we, that Harry and Meghan were not going to communicate with certain British tabloids, including those uh, that Harry's been having lots of legal issues with, including the Daily Mail and the Mail Online. So the Mail Online are saying that a spokesperson told them. So we're not saying that they've got it from another source or that the spokesperson spoke to another publication. It's been labelled as a spokesperson contacting them. So have Harry and Meghan realised that to get their version of events across, and it is their version of events, that they need to speak to the British press. So are they realising something here that they can't just control the media as they want? 
that they do have to sometimes communicate and speak with them. So I found that very interesting. Um, so King Charles III, as I've said, is set to celebrate a milestone birthday at Clarence House with a party with his closest friends and family on Tuesday, November the 14th. Now, the Sunday Times, a British broadsheet, not a tabloid, reported that Prince Harry had turned down an invitation to the birthday bash and will stay in California. But a spokesperson for the Sussexes told the Mail Online the couple had no idea about it. There has been no contact regarding an invitation to His Majesty's upcoming birthday. It is disappointing the Sunday Times has misreported this story, they said. The same spokesperson also denied that Meghan, who found fame on Suits, will be making a return to acting following reports earlier this week. Um, a source close to the Sussexes, so this is not the spokesperson, this is, this is now a source, told the Mail Online that they were not invited for Charles's party in London next week. They had not received any invitation and were unaware of any celebrations until the stories came out. The insider said, I'm sure the Duke will find a way to reach out privately to wish His Majesty a happy birthday like he has always done. Oh, I mean, who are the, who are who is the source leaking? I mean, I'm sure all the little paw prints would lead straight back to Montecito. Um, a few interesting facts about this. I mean, number one, we know that Harry and Meghan read all the press and the stories. They're probably sat there googling themselves right now, seeing what's uh, what's out there about them. And they obviously saw this story. It has sort of irked them, if you like, because because they do care about what's being written about them. Despite what they say, they do absolutely care about what's being written. And they are there to correct, or from their point of view, correct the stories about them. So an official spokesperson said what they said, and then they got a source that I'm sure leads back to them um, to kind of fill out the official statement that was supposed to be, I suppose, very vague, with a little bit more detail. Uh, they didn't even know about the party. They weren't even told. Um, a friend of the couple suggested the palace could even have leaked the snubbing story to take attention away from the recent royal visit to Kenya, where the king faced calls to apologise for Britain's colonial past. Well, it's true, there, there were calls to apologise, but the king, in agreement with, obviously, because that speech that he read out was in conjunction with the British government, agreed what he was going to say, they were happy with it, and the actual speech went down well on the Royal Visit Kenya. The people that were trying to put the visit down had, of course, links back to Harry and Meghan, their cheerleader, and literally wearing a rah-rah skirt with H&M on a crop top with pom-poms, was sort of saying, red carpets, red carpets, the king and queen walked on a red carpet, my goodness, how terrible, trying to bring down the royal visit Kenya at the same time that Harry and Meghan's spokesperson is trying to say uh, that it's a deflection from all the bad press that's whipped up by Harry and Meghan's cheerleader. My goodness, the cheerleader with the H&M on, on the front. You could literally see the pom-pom. The pom-pom was almost taking off. It was waving so furiously. Remember, all poor prints lead back to Meghan and Harry and Montecito. Rather, that should be dinosaur claws. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, um, maybe cloven hoofs. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, the story is being positioned in a way to make it look like the Duke is snubbing his father, which he is not, the friend said. Considering the trip to Kenya didn't go well, this might be a welcome distraction. It did go well. It was a success. Uh, and yes, there were some criticism, but it came from online uh, rather than the people that actually... Um, were there on the front. Now, obviously, I did do a video on the Royal Visit Kenya. Do go and check it out. 
I do talk about the red carpet story. And of course, I do talk about what the Kenyan journalist tweeted about the treatment of the Kenyan journalist compared to the British. So I address all of that in that video. Go check it out. Uh, Royal and government sources have been clear that they consider the Kenyan trip last week a resounding success, which is what I mean about the people um, that, that the royal visits actually matter. Now, a friend of the, of the Sussexes told Mail Online that they would normally have been included in plans for significant events in the UK, despite the widening gap between themselves and the rest of the family. The story in the Times, as well as subsequent stories, have been positioned in a way to make it look like the Duke is snubbing his father, which he is not. Relations have been strained, blah, 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 blah. I think that Harry had no intention of going to any party. Um, you know, he's thousands of miles away, coming for just one occasion, especially when he hasn't actually got anywhere to live officially in the United Kingdom at the moment. Um, I don't think was ever going to happen. I'm not entirely sure whether an invitation was sent or not. I'm probably leaning towards that there wasn't one sent. Um, I don't actually think the king, on the occasion of his 75th birthday, wanted the hassle, the aggravation that would come with Harry and Meghan joining. I mean, even if Harry turned up by himself, it would be awkward. Uh, especially on that occasion. I think what is better, what, or what would be better, would be to sort things out privately before any kind of further big set-piece royal event, or even, you know, private significant milestones. I think they need to sort it out before they meet. And I don't think um, that Harry and Meghan are on the invitation list. They're definitely probably uh, off any kind of major invite. Um, so, so yes, I think relations are strained. I think this shows that Harry and Meghan most definitely are concerned with what the press say. They are still completely desperate to correct stories or put out their own narratives. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, and I'm sure there will be many, many more upcoming Harry and Meghan stories. So pop on your RR skirts, get your pom-poms. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit that bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me to you all and goodbye.